Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, webinar participants. I'm Kestutis Yushus, the chair of our group board. And today I will present to you our group unaudited results for three months of 2024. During this webinar, we will review the overall financial results of three months of 2024 and separately the results of each business segments of the group. Additionally, today I will present the outlook for 2024 and the status of our group strategic and unique tech products, projects, which we just recently presented uh, this morning on our uh, website. Since last year, the group has been re reviewing the perf performance of the main agriculture business activities and has made strategic decisions in order to generate more gross margin and diversify risks. For this reason, by mid-2023, we transferred half of our arable land to conventional regenerative farming principles. And in the second quarter of this year, a third of their farming is done on the conventional practices already. The results of the first quarter of this year already reflect a slightly increased gross profit with significant impact contributed by the crop growing and dairy segments. Moreover, the group operating costs decreased by 8% in the first quarter of 2024 compared to previous year mainly attributed to reduced marketing expenses, which we, like a group uh, this year, we spend much less. Currently, the group is reviewing all cost components, specifically targeting unnecessary expenditures to align with its goal of reducing annual operating costs to 12 million of uh, 2024, which we published it in our EBITDA forecast. Now we'll review the segment by segment. Commodity prices show a positive trend. Wheat prices, uh, which are rising rapidly, the rapeseed motif has also increased uh, from 444 to 496 per ton from the beginning of 2024 to 31 of May. It's important to note that the change in the prices of organic raw products always occur later than those of conventional ones. If high conventional prices persist for a longer period, organic prices will also rise, as long-term practice has shown. Accordingly to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, yield of wheat and legumes and other crops, grains, have been flat as a result of climate change. And in order to feed the growing global populations, farmers will need to adopt technologies, as it is evident that existing measures to increase yields are not longer sufficient. That's why we see increasing prices back of every turbulence on the market when uh, uh, storms or heat waves or, or droughts are coming in the different regions of the uh, of the growing areas in, in the world. The yield of the crops grown by the group have remained the same, and in some cases, even slightly better than planned last year. Additionally, early spring weather was favorable for crop growing and allowed to perform quality work. According to the current data, crops conditions are good and, and better harvest can be expected from average of last previous years. Due to lower yield of legumes previously season, which are more expensive than grains, we had a lower sales result in the crop growing segment in first quarter 2024. In 23, it was by lower yields, we don't have enough to sell for first quarter in 2024. That's why our sales was lower. In the second half of 2023, we had, we had, had already valued the subsidies for 2024. So we will remain similar of those the group received in 2023, but the, the, in general, the subsidies are a little bit lower 
And this is mainly because uh, last uh, year, in the first quarter, we we already targeted uh, full organic subsidies, and that's what we're not targeting this year. Dating. Let's move to the next important segment. As you seen from the graph on this slide, milk yields improved in the first quarter of 2024, and we were the highest in the last three or even more uh, years that we're showing three years uh, results. So that's why we're saying three years, but actually the yields are higher from last probably five or seven years. And um, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, since the second quarter of 2024, a third of our dairy herds started operating conventionally. Farms that experienced a greater drop in milk yield due to grazing in the fields and, he and heat stress on cattle during the summer were transferred to the conventional on, on priority. For this reason, we expect milk yields to increase in the coming quarters of the year, and we will not see so huge, big uh, dump like is, we have seen in, in previous years. Uh, then we had a hot summer and uh, cows uh, grazing uh, grass outside. We, we had dramatic reduction in productivity during summer period. So one third of the herd uh, now will stay in the, we have the access outside access, but uh, it will be not uh, keeps on the grazing so that it will uh, keep uh, productivity higher and the costs uh, will be controlled and lower. Uh, and that's how we can increase our productivity and margins. Raw milk production price rose 4% per ton compared to the same quarter last year. Additionally, the cost of raw milk decreased by 11%. Higher milk yields naturally reduced the cost of raw milk as a large portion of cost in milk production are fixed. So this trend we probably will see next second and third and, and fourth quarter, then the uh, production of conventional will, uh, will speed up and uh, the results from conventional uh, herds, uh, we will see more versus we see uh, in the in second uh, quarter. So we expect uh, much improvement uh, on the end of the year uh, due to previously mentioned reasons. Mushroom going. Another large and important business segment for group for group. From the current results for the first quarter, we can see that both production prices at the market as well as production costs itself are stable. We do not see any significant diminutions from the goals set for the segment. And we can say that we can keep on the forecast EBITDA for coming year 2024. The results of mushroom growing segment are in line with the planet EBITDA. Uh, but uh, the lower gross profit in the first quarter of 2024 for the segment was due to lower sales of compost, which is actually a byproduct of the mushroom growing, which is fluctuate between the quarters. And uh, not all product produced quantity was sold during the uh, first quarter of 2024, and part of the mushrooms were remained uh, in the stock. So it's uh, this fluctuation you see between uh, mushrooms uh, produced and mushrooms sold. And this actually uh, is falls in this margin of 100,000 euros, which is the, uh, we are lower comparing with year 2023. FMCG. Segment sales and gross profit have increased, and this trend continues. It's important to mention that uh, uh, this segment presentation is without uh, GRIB LT, which is we are... Uh, spin off uh, from our group and we sold last uh, last uh, last summer and uh, without uh, without uh, uh, grip lt uh, sales revenues for first quarter of last year was only 0 0.2 euro million euros and uh, in the first and this year uh, in first quarter we have uh, 0 0.67 million euros of uh, sales revenues Uh, in the first quarter of this year, the group introduced also new products to the market, uh, which is related to the dairy segment, and flavored yogurts, aiming to expand this product range and grow the community of conscious consumers choosing for sustainable products. 
Fab expansions on distribution network is expected to reach a wider consumer base. And uh, we see more and more good take-ups uh, from the same uh, sales areas as uh, new products needs time uh, to that consumers will find uh, and, uh, and and brings us to his own uh, on, on purchasing by a basket. Outlook for 2024. On the basis of currently available information and current market trends, we do not see significant changes to the forecast to generate this EBITDA 23.3 20, 20, million EBITDA. We will have a clearer picture of the EBITDA after the second and third quarter when the crop will be harvested and actual cost of production will be incurred. And, and more important, that the real not forecasted yields will be will be counted as revenues for point of harvest. Strategy implementation and tech projects. Today we presented uh, publicly uh, about the project is called uh, 75 million projects where we wanted to uh, to bring to the market and to scale our technologies we developed uh, in last uh, five years. What kind of problem we're solving uh, with these technologies? That we're solving problem which is actually a huge problem, bold problem. So it's we need to feed uh, uh, 50. We need to produce 56 percent of uh, more food, but uh, that uh, actually two thirds of emissions out of existing level need need you to be reduced. And the Tau technologies is was is actually not possible to reduce this emissions agriculture, which presents at the moment approximately one quarter of world uh, CO2 emissions. Auga is, is a major player in European agriculture, and uh, we are keen to change uh, the industry. And we started ourselves to test and to find solutions uh, for, uh, for, 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 for changing the super way of doing farming. But actually, we can't find it. And uh, this is uh, the roadmap of Auga. Uh, presents uh, where we uh, were be before five years and where will be the technologies after five years from now. So five years before, it's just remembering because uh, I think in this uh, webinar, most of uh, listeners uh, we are uh, we are we know what Auga does uh, and what is uh, active in which area. But uh, just remembering that five years before we just started digging in, uh, trying to find uh, emissions uh, problems, and uh, we find and through during these five years we developed and tested unique but uh, fossil free machinery and low meat and emissions feed technology. And for this technology, we have already international patents, which actually proves our uniqueness of technologies. And uh, in five years from now, Algatech will commercialize the existing sustainable farming technology we created already. And providing that sustainability can be both effective and profitable for farmers, which will create a snowball effect in the industry to change. How could we become a reality? Uh, for big uh, big changes, uh, this the uh, seriously amount of capital needed. So Auga, from its own resources, uh, from starting from five years before and six even years before, we use that our part of our equity to to develop technologies which is related to the sustainable farming operations and how to change farming from to net zero. And uh, we we spent up to 10 million euros uh, through this period of time. What we're looking for, we're looking for, uh, we applied to the project, which is called Billion for Business Program, administrated by National Promotional Institution in Vega. Uh, the program, which is, uh, we applied for 60 million euros, uh, uh, long-term uh, favorable condition loans. And uh, we're looking for also 50 mini million equity, quasi-equity, uh, different kind of uh, uh, kind of investments, which will need to finance this own uh, part of the business. And um, what we can do out of this uh, project financing and what will be derivables by 2026. First of all, we will commercialize and further development of existing sustainable farming technologies, including tractors, which is called M1 tractors, 20 units, farming platforms, 60 units, and cattle tech systems. We will test technology on 38,000 demonstrating uh, uh, plots, uh, and uh, 
we allow 20% of Lithuania farmers uh, to use the technology we developed and to, to check how it works on smaller holdings. And uh, this is important to mention that this is a new activity in our group and uh, this activity unlock our and more a normal potential potential for the growth in the in next years. Our solution and technology portfolio. So, like I mentioned before, so we we had already very very known already product on the market, which which is we started from this developing, and this is Auga M1 hybrid uh, technology methane driven and electrical driven tractor, and uh, with uh, and Auga E1 actually this is a new thing which we presented today. This is uh, this technology which will fills the gap between large tractor and uh, and will, will will take over all the rest of the works needed in the farming operations the big tractor you can do only sole preparation the largest largest uh, works on the fields and uh, with smaller e1 multi multifunctional platform we can cover the rest of the works on no fossils uh, the no fossils on farm technology and important to mention this is modularity of this platform it will be will create unique opportunity to the farmers uh, to use different of uh, type of implements and uh, and these implements will change efficiency and uh, dramatically reduce the cost uh, important to mention that these tractors are both of the tractors we have also electric driven uh, systems and uh, the systems and the batteries which are major part of our electric or hybrid driven tractors we will not work only uh, for the farming operations, not on the fields, but, uh, but they will work also both uh, like uh, balancing and uh, and accumulating uh, cheap energy in the moments when this is energy is cheap in the market and selling back when the energy is expensive. So this is this kind of uh, bi-directional energy supply can cover up to 50% of tractors life cycle costs so the tractor's income streams will be not only farming, but also uh, energy sales and balancing. Cattle tech is a technology which we work uh, since five years already. And we have statistic proven results that our feed technology works and that we, we, can, subs we can reduce our emissions uh, at least by one third. Important to mention this technology also will be used on the sharing principles and we'll try to use it with uh, local farmers here in Lithuania. And um, technology will be transparent carbon footprint measurement control and certification systems. And this is important uh, that uh, this uh, uh, low, low emissions uh, feed will allow to produce low emissions milk, raw milk and uh, raw less emissions on dairy products, they already did generating for the farmers additional incomes, which big corporations and uh, companies uh, we motivate uh, to, for far farmers to change to uh, better practices. What is important here uh, from shareholder side uh, to 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 the projects we developing here in our group? Uh, first of all. It will generate a new revenue stream for breakthrough technologies, could come as technology sales to farmers or sales of IP rights to industry players. Uh, we, at the moment, uh, open for both uh, ways uh, of uh, putting technology on the market, for commercialization of technology, by cooperating with big industrial companies or by doing our own way. This is why this is a commercialization of technology could be could works on on both of their ways. Uh, second, improvement of business efficiency and sustainability. So agriculture operations with the new mission, no cost to nature, smart farm technology will cut operational costs. So by designing the technology, we not evaluating sustainability aspect and emissions aspect, but we also look through the efficiency. Uh, efficiency in numbers and we more like uh, we believe that uh, this technology will be cheaper to operate versus regular co conventional technologies and the uh, and machinery and uh, the technology uh, actually it will be life cycle technology will be less costly to the farmers versus existing ones 
uh, generate the uh, possibility to deliver commodities, creating a new sustainable category of uh, food and uh, and increasing revenues. So after the technology will be implemented also on algal fields, uh, it will be a substantial reduction in the emissions uh, from our generated uh, agriculture commodities. And we will certifi certify these emissions and at we believe that big agricultural uh, commodity buyers, uh, FMCG companies, we want to change this uh, purchasing practices. We want to, uh, to segregate and we prioritize uh, more sustainably produced raw materials. And that's where the revenues out of farming operations could, uh, could be increased. And second, first, which, first, which is very important to, to mention, that new technologies will have the use of cycle of uh, 15 years. And therefore, no major reinvestment will be necessary in this segment, which in, in turn will increase the free cash flow that can be allocated to our group shareholders. So here I'm going to mention that uh, uh, Auger Group, since last five uh, five years, when we are concentrated on the uh, foss no fossils uh, on farms, uh, bio meat and process and so on, we don't want to invest in fossil uh, technology. So that's now we're changing completely all the setup of technologies which we can uh, can bring uh, to the farms. Then we will succeed with this project. So it will allow us completely reshape the new modern technologies and this will increase efficiency of course on the farms and uh, shareholders uh, in the meantime so will gain from this increase of efficiencies and and, and uh, cost reductions and more revenues but also that uh, free cash flow not anymore needed will be needed to to serve uh, to serve uh, reinvestments so we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, allocate more and uh, starting paying dividends out of uh, free cash flow of, from operations. Success uh, for the project would open the door for global expansion through franchise model to, to change the face of the farming. So like we discussed before, so we already presented before, our, our long-term goal to change the industry and to bring that not only technology on the market, but also how the technology will be used by, by smaller and uh, middle farmers. So this is franchise kind model will allow for global expansion and this is, will increase unlimited growth potential for Auga in the long term. The share price on the market since, uh, since last, uh, last uh, four months contact informations and uh, disclaimers and uh, AUGA will be a synonym for sustainable food life, food and lifestyle. So my presentation is finished. Thank you for the comprehensive yeah. presentation. We will proceed with the questions. Before that, I would like to remind everyone you can submit the questions in the question box below. As uh, there are no questions on behalf of OGA Group, thank you everyone. It was a pleasure being with you today. The recording of the presentation will be available on the NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. And thank you for a very informative conference. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Have a nice day.